Okay, today we're making Sloppy Joe's and Macaroni and Cheese, and I've already done two videos on my mac and cheese. The second one, because I forgot I'd done the first one. <laughs> so I'm just going to do a video on Sloppy Joe's, because I know I've not done that one before. We make our Sloppy Joe's um, homemade. You can do it through, you know, canned, home canned stuff, or you can do it through store-bought stuff. Today it's through store-bought stuff, because my pantry is depleted of home canned things. That's why you keep seeing me get them on the handy date and little can opener and open all these things. Or now we've got, last night it was the pull top. <laughs> um... So, real simple, I've got three pounds of ground beef in here, and we're just going to brown the ground beef. You can, if you desire, to saute onions before or even cook them with the hamburger. I do not um, currently do that because I have objections by a couple of little ones about that on some things. Some things I don't mind it. One thing about Sloppy Joe's, and I know everybody's different, but I like, I think it's important um, for me that that I brown this and I make sure that it's all crumbled really well. You can put the camera down here. Um, if I have big chunks in here, it's kind of like uh, biting into a meatball, I guess, when you're eating it. And the spices do not mingle through the meat. So you're getting like this big hamburger bite out of a Sloppy Joe sandwich and that's not what Sloppy Joes are. I use tomato paste in my Sloppy Joes. Um, my mom always used tomato paste in her Sloppy Joes. Now she would use a seasoning packet with it and I think the seasoning packet years ago when I was growing up she used French's seasoning packet but there's ways around seasoning packets where you don't have to buy those things with all the additives in it um, and it doesn't take a whole lot of spices to do it. So. I got three pounds of burger. I'm going to add anywhere. These are small cans. These were all they had. They're six ounce cans. I will add anywhere from two to three. I'll start with two and see how, after I get the season, seasonings in there, see if I need to add the third one. So you'll need to add water to this. Now, my hamburger is very lean. It's a 93 to 7% ratio. So I'd, I usually end up having to add water as I brown it. There's no fat to drain out of it. And I can tell already just by looking at it that I'm going to need to add that third can. I am still going to wait till I get the spices in though. And how I can tell is because I like my enough paste in here that it's got a much redder tone to it. I add salt. And then paprika is the main seasoning for this. You can I sometimes I will put a little bit of cumin in, and if I do, it's not much. The other big thing is sugar. Brown sugar has always been our favorite. I have not been able to use brown sugar for years because of Zebulon. So I use white sugar, and that's a that's a manner of preference and taste. You don't want the tomato to be overpowering. Um, and you don't want the sugar to be overpowering. It's kind of just finding a, a happy balance there. Okay. Then the other ingredient is mustard. Now here's the thing. It is just the slightest amount of mustard. I mean, it's, it, you can use powdered mustard or dry mustard or you can use prepared mustard. The amount that you use is so, it's almost microscopic. So microscopic you wonder why even bother putting it in. Um, and when I haven't made it, I've noticed a huge difference. Now the other thing you can put in, and I, I've done it a couple times, um, I have not done it often, is just a little bit of apple cider vinegar, a tablespoon or two. Um, it helps to give a little bit of a, a bite to this. I did end up adding the other tomato paste as well as some more sugar and more paprika. Um, the the sensation, I think, and the flavoring that you're going for, it's a cross between sweet and tangy. It's probably, hence the vinegar. I mean, I might actually add a little bit to this just to see what it does, because it's been so long since I've done it. But, it, look, show the camera here. This is the, the coloration and the texture, I think, that um, is the way to go. It stays on the sandwich well. If, you're, if it's much paler than this, then that's a good cue to add some more tomato paste. But again, you're not going to for that tomato flavor. And if that's what you're getting, then you don't have enough seasonings in it. Um, try some more paprika. Try a little more sugar until it balances out. Uh, this is not necessarily a healthy meal. Um, it's full of protein. That's about all you get from it. Okay. So, um, but it's it's a nice 
nice weekend meal, uh, a good treat once in a while. All right, so I did go ahead and add the vinegar to it because, like I said, it's been so long since I've used it. I couldn't remember what it did for it. And I just used a small tablespoon, maybe a couple teaspoons, and it did add a little bit of a, a zine to it. You know, I know it obviously reduces the acid in the tomatoes, but it does give a little bit of a more zesty flavor. But I would be reserved with the amount of vinegar that you had. Like I said, I've got three pounds of um, burger in here. I have got 18 ounces of tomato paste, and then I've got the sugar, the paprika, and salt, and so uh, just a tiny squirt of mustard and a light tablespoon of vinegar. And it's got it's got a real nice flavor. There's no need for the packets or of seasoning or anything like that. All right, so there is the sloppy Joe on homemade sourdough bread and homemade macaroni and cheese.